For me, smart manufacturing really is industry 4.0 within a manufacturing context. So industry 3.0 introduced computerized automation and industry 4.0 introduces cyber physical systems. And it does that within four key design areas. So the first of those is interoperability. Um, it looks at the four M's, so human, methods, materials, and machines, and making sure that they can, as the term implies, interoperate. So Internet of Things is key to that because that brings all the information from uh, the, the devices or the machines. Second design principle is information transparency. And within a smart manufacturing context, this is often referred to as a digital twin and very, sim very simply uses the data that has been collected and represents it in a visual manner to show you in a, in a cyber space what's actually going on within the physical space. Third is technical assistance. So technical assistance is really augmenting what humans are doing within a particular process. So often it will be to enforce safety or even to replace activities which a human can't do safely. Also to provide faster decision making or faster analysis of a mass of data and present that back to the human in order to assist them through a process. So the final design principle is decentralized decision making. So these cyber physical systems should really be able to make their own decisions. They should be able to act autonomously and only when exceptions that haven't been catered for within the model should they need to escalate outside of the model. So hopefully what's clear from looking at those four design principles is that IoT is absolutely key to enabling those design principles but on its own doesn't actually deliver anything. So it's only from looking at what you do with the information that's being gathered, where you look to gather the information, what are the business values that you're trying to achieve through that information. All of those things are needed to inform your smart manufacturing initiative and IoT will be one of the key enablers, but mustn't be looked at on its own. And I think that's important and, and it's not always understood. So some of the problems that we've had in the past is, is that systems are of, often sort of reactive and, and backward looking, and they're also looking at individual silos. So if you imagine a sort of a rear view mirror of, of what's just happened, what we're trying to do going forward is in general terms is to look ahead to start trying to predict what's going to happen. Uh, and in order to do that, you can't just look at the individual silos. You have to look end to end across the piece. So we feel it's really important that you have strong foundations. And therefore, although everyone would like to get to the ultimate, which we call level six, where you're symbiotic, you're artificially, artificial intelligence enabled, etc., we think that you have to start with level one. So that the first step on your journey really is all around visualization. So having decided how you're going to scope your particular smart manufacturing initiative, have you actually collected and are you able to visualize all of the data points that will inform it? And through doing that, then that gives you the foundation and, and that's, that's level one or the first step on the journey. The next step is to look at how you integrate all of those different points. So how do they interrelate to each other? So, so now you start building up a model that, that applies them uh, and links them. And, that, and that's level two or, or step two in the journey. Step three is, is where you can now start to do analysis and, and also start to put in place some key performance indicators, targets, uh, identify norms that, that apply historically identify where you'd like to go going forward and at this point you're really starting to build a very robust model of what's going on within your manufacturing journey. You're now able to start to move to a level four which is predictive so it, this allows you to look at the information that you've gathered and you've identified some of the factors which are leading indicators for potential issues. So you're now able to, to use predictive techniques to identify when a problem may or will occur in the future, which then progresses to level five. 
level five is prescriptive, you can, because you've been able to prove that at level four you're accurately predicting what's going to happen and you understand the underlying causes, you're now able to build into your systems what are we going to do about this and you can have a systematic response to these things. So again, that's then the, the prescriptive level four, sorry, level five. Uh, and, and then the final level is level six. So having gained confidence across all of the five previous levels, this is where you can now start to introduce artificial intelligence, broadly step back, allow the system uh, to make its own decisions and, and work in a pretty autonomous fashion. And, and that's, that's really where everyone would like to get to. But I must restate, it's, it's a journey. You have to take the steps. There's value along the way. So even just doing the first step of visualization can bring some very real value, can uncover some things about your business that maybe you didn't know. So do start with level one and just make sure you have a partner who can take you through the whole journey because then that allows you to start with the end in mind, but to start with some very practical steps. Mm -hmm.